All right, it's the second week in September. We're going to take a look at the garden. And we'll get a quick overview first. We've had some um, things probably don't look much different on the um, outside. We just had some pick some more stuff. Um, anyway, let's get going. So I picked some more tomatillos. So um, last week I harvested about <clears throat> probably like a gallon or so three quarters to a gallon and uh, this past week I've harvested about the same amount so um, looking forward to using them and they're getting they're not getting very overly huge but um, they are going about this size right here is the this size they get so only a couple inches across but you know that's that's what they are not like the big giant ones I've seen in the grocery store but but anyway they're producing um, and aromas, here's our, once again our volunteer marigold, very dominating and pushy, but that's fine. So with the um, aromas, they still have a lot of that blight stuff, still showing a little bit of signs of new growth here. We see we've got some new growth up here um, and putting out some new fruit. The, t this, the tomatoes on there haven't really done much for ripening, so it's been a lot cooler um, now this past this weekend has been the nights have been very cooler um, the days have still got up to 80 85 but um the nights have been down in the 50s so the plants are not going to be as uh, vigorous or really productive but we're still see, see some healthy growth new healthy growth here a lot of the stuff um, so you know they're still hanging in there <clears throat> not really haven't harvested I haven't harvested any tomatoes off them in, in a while so um, anyway and so then our red okra we're starting to start to get some of that to come up it's still, still having the same the aphids like it as well because there's a ton of aphids right there which is kind of been an ongoing battle as you know with the aphids um, there is here is our gourd plant our uh, birdhouse gourd um, and there's a bee sitting right there um, so what we've got here right there is our one of our developing fruit so it's pretty good size so we're looking forward to to see that we've got a lot of other um, <clears throat> female fruits there so we'll see if any others are going to be fertilized it's kind of hard to see in there with this bean mess I finally did go in there yesterday morning real early and pick a lot of the greens. So uh, because I hadn't picked them um, when they first came out, they weren't. So these are all green beans here, this first, most of what you see. So if you can see the red there, so the, the green beans are the white. The red is the scarlet runner beans, and then the purple on the end is the hyacinth beans, which are, would never be mistaken. But... The green beans, <clears throat> I had let go because I couldn't, didn't get in there and find them and whatnot. So they're not the nice little thin green beans. They're, um, they got kind of fat. The beans and the pods started to develop, but you know, they're still good, nice and healthy. So I picked about two gallons of them, and um, it wasn't until I was inside the house I realized that I had picked this other thing here. So this is a. What, this one is a green bean, and the other one looks kind of like it, um, especially if you're uh, up really early in the morning, it's kind of dark, and if you're in a hurry, you're just grabbing them. This is the, this is not a green bean, this is the uh, runner bean. This is that red flower here, so once again, the white flower is the green bean, and then our red flower, which you can see all mixed in here, is this scarlet runner bean. It's called scarlet because the flowers are red. And runner bean is just a different type of bean rather than a um, thing, but it, it likes to run all over the place, which it, it clearly does because it's um, this flower here represents, and that flower down there uh, is about, you know, four feet away from where it was planted. And there's also the runner beans over there as well. So this one looks very similar to it, uh, but only if you're not really paying attention side by side, you would never mistake them because they're flat, they're darker. And the beans are much bigger, um, especially if they've developed. So I ended up picking about four of them by accident, just because they were in there with the, all the rest of them. Um, so we'll see how, um, I'll 
taste them as well. So they're different. Their pods are um, fuzzy and stuff like this. And I think this is them here, actually. I remember looking at them yesterday and, and thinking, these don't look like them because they look kind of almost fuzzy and almost kind of a, a tint, a hint to them. And they feel a lot different. So with the regular green beans, which um, I thought I saw some around here, they're just you know, nice and smooth coated and stuff. Where the leaves are, have the little stuff that sticks to my shirt. Um, no, no, these beans actually have that same little little fibers, little fingers in them too. So here's a regular green bean, just straight, um, long, slender, and that's it. These guys have more of this hook to them and this point at the end, and they're, they're starting to get fatter and more quick, quicker, and they have a different hue there. And here's more green beans, so just straight in there. So anyway, got about two gallons of that. So we're looking forward to having a nice big um, mess of green beans there to eat. Um, and here's our purple, our hyacinth beans. These are the purple moon shadow here and the Asian reds there. And you can, oh, you can see it now, a definite difference between the pods. So these pods here. Um, have a totally different shape than these ones. These ones look more like traditional beans, peas, or something. Um, just curved. But these guys have a much different shape. Let's see if you can get some good contrast with the light there. So they have a much different shape. They don't have that elongated. So here you can see if I can put these together in the same frame. So you can kind of see the difference. This one and that one there. The one on the right is, I believe that's the purple moon shadow, and this one on the left is the Asian red. They're both hyacinth, both hyacinth beans, but you can definitely see it did a much different shape, but there's a fatter and shorter. So anyway, but they're both beautiful um, and stuff, and the flowers are just amazing um, and whatnot. So anyway, those are them. They're just beautiful. Um, if the pods, once again, the pods, you can eat them if they're very thin and no beans starting to form, like maybe this one here, where there's like, it's totally flat, but once the beans start to form, they say you are not supposed to eat them because they have some um, proteins and stuff that are, that are toxic, so make you sick a little bit, but it's fine. We're just growing them for an experiment and mainly for, to get some more seeds and just to see how they grow. And so we know for next year what they look like and all that stuff. So anyway, here's a better shot of the, the beans and stuff, the pots. But you can see all over the place just lots of those beautiful pots. So that's a beautiful, beautiful plant with these flowers. The leaves are pretty, you know. The vines are pretty. They're purple. The leaves are green and purple. Flowers are just amazing too. So very happy with those. Looking forward to planting more of those um, next year. With our... Um, other paste tomatoes, the health kick, they're doing good still. Um, still having some new growth. Once again, it's been cooler, so the tomatoes aren't quite as productive and crazy, but they're still going. Um, these guys here still continuing to produce, still having lots of our um, yellow pear, Juliet, and San Marzano. Um, we can see them over here. I picked a few um, yesterday, but they've been doing very good. And then we see that besides this blight or this whatever this is here, we haven't really seen much many problems with with these guys. So um, they're starting to get some stuff on there, but you know it's getting towards the end of the season. We've probably got a probably at least another month, another few weeks before things start to really shut down, start to get really chilly, and uh, things start basically closing up shop. But we'll enjoy them until as long as we can. So there's our asparagus. Um, I think that what's been going on is just the basically they're starting to shut down for the season since they've been up since March there. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to cut them back when they get all crusty and let them uh, rest. So once again, i uh, still amazed that uh, second week in September and we still have so much squash here. Um, still so productive. Um, never would have thought. Anyhow, um, still going, still ha getting all the different squashes. There's a, uh, a scallop squash down there, the sunburst. 
There's yellow zucchini there. There's regular zucchini uh, around here somewhere I saw them. Now, I did actually see, a, I was cutting back some of these leaves to uh, get a little better access to this plant and found a squash bug and some eggs in there. But uh, I killed them, but I'm not going to go through here and try to, um, you know, uh, look for anything now at this point because... It's, there's just there's just too much stuff. It's much easier to do when they're a young plant and you can kind of keep an eye on it. But now it's just kind of, it's going to be what it's going to be. Uh, and so our eggplants over here are looking healthy. Um, the little white fingers there, it's, or what's it called, Gretel or Hansel. It's basically kicking out little ones there. Um, haven't quite formed quite up much yet. I did pick a pepper off there, I believe that's the Cubanelle, or the Carmen, I don't know. Here's the Cajun uh, Bell, it's starting to put out some peppers of its, uh, some new peppers. Once again, these were the transplants, and so, we late season transplants, so we're waiting to see how they were going to do, and finally we're getting some sweet cherries, um, chocolate bell starting to form again, and now that it's, you know, the sun's not going to be so intense, hopefully we'll, they'll be able to develop without sun scald. I picked some of these uh, poblanos. They're doing some weird stuff. Um, normally they stay totally green, but they were getting kind of reddish, yellowish, and some of them were getting soft, so I picked them. Um, so I don't know what why they're changing color like that. I also picked some of the uh, mariachi. They were red. And I picked uh, some of these uh, Big Jim Anaheim, or New Mexican chilies uh, because they were red as well and I figured we'll see how they go but there's several of them still down there the plant is just yeah way too tall to stand up on its own without some sort of support and our okra is still going strong still having issues with the aphids but other than that doing all right banana peppers are Coming back a bit, um, these marigolds have just completely dominated um, them, so it's kind of been hard for them to to survive in here. But so our basil's still going out, and we're probably going to pick these soybeans in a bit. There are a few little soybeans that we do have, um, so we'll just probably harvest those and then pull those plants up. So anyway, here you can see our our green beans in there. We have a bunch of them and. I had to, you can see that they're all messed up a little bit because I had to get in there and it's very difficult to uh, <laughs> to find all those things with this with this huge mess. So I definitely have to have a much better system next year. Um, I can't let them grow up and then back over because it just makes it too hard to pick and whatnot. But here here they are, nice little green beans. And then you can see that everything is kind of spread out here onto the corn stalks even though the corn's dead we left this in here because there was a bunch of stuff attached to them and they have uh formed quite quite a network out here so anywho that is it see here's one of our hyacinth ones um from way over there too so um yeah things have been popping off finally getting some green beans um more tomatillos Excited to, to make some salsa verde with that. And uh, things are still kicking along. They're starting to slow down a bit for certain plants, but other plants are starting to, to pick up um, because of the cooling temperatures. But we'll just uh, keep going and see how everything goes. Thanks for watching.